Yeah, distinguished guests. Uh, good morning to you all. And uh, you all have heard enough about virtual learning from the previous speakers and also from uh, Mr. our chief guest. So what I'm going to do is uh, just talk a little bit about that. Uh, what is the present scenario and how we can really implement uh, virtual learning. You know, what was happening, you know, before the pandemic when we really looked at uh, distance learning, we used to call it distance learning in olden days, there wasn't much importance to that. A colleague of mine used to, you know, joke, distance learning is distant from learning. You know, that means in other words, that's the kind of uh, regard we had for it. And few people used to do some, you know, course on distance and which was recognized or not recognized, you know, nobody said, I did my graduation from distance learning, everybody said something wrong. The whole attitude changed when the pandemic came. Because I know that, uh, you know, in my own organization, with 32 classes going around overnight, we just had to send the students back and what do we do the next day? And then when we started that, it was a learning experience, how to go about the virtual learning, how to improve that, and how to make it better than your normal learning. And that's how we came about with all our experience. Firstly, when we talk about virtual learning, let us not consider something as learning. First, we have to understand what is learning. Because without understanding learning, which is supposed to be student-centric, you see, without understanding learning, we just cannot talk about virtual learning or learning because as my colleague has said, the student has not learned, the teacher has not thought. So that's what we are looking at, it's student-centric. And when we talk about learning, it can be contact class or it can be virtual. But the most important thing is, what is the outcome? If the outcome is not there and if I just give you a piece of paper which I call a certificate, that certificate has no meaning, which is unfortunately happening here in India most of the time. When we talk about learning outcome, what I say is, can that person with that knowledge utilize it in his day-to-day -day life? In his professional front, in his personal life, can he utilize that knowledge? If he cannot utilize that knowledge, there is no learning outcome. No matter what you have got, what degrees you have got, has no meaning. Because each and everything what we learn, are we able to apply it in my daily life? It could be professional life, personal life, social life, wherever it is. And that is what I call the most important thing. When we define virtual learning, now the definition is that the learning experience through utilizing computers, internet, both inside and outside facilities of an educational organization, the instruction takes place online environment. That is what everybody talks about. But the most important thing is, if you consider that virtual learning is, you know, yesterday I was giving a lecture in the classroom, today somebody has put a camera and then they are relaying to the students, I'm afraid that is not virtual learning. We have to think in a two different ways. And, you know, one of the few phrases, what I come, I saw in the papers, uh, an article has come that the students don't want to do an exam because not, they are not used to writing for the last two years. Now, when you look at it, you know, the people have no idea what is virtual learning. You know, if two years a student has not been writing, there is something basically wrong with the whole system. So, this is what I want to clarify that when you talk about online learning or virtual learning, the fundamentals don't change. The method may change. That is what I want to mention. Now, when we talk about maritime training, what are we affected? One is the new education policy. And the new education policy talks about open distance learning, online learning, digital learning. So that will be introduced in the future, whether you like it or not. The second very important thing is that shipping is highly cyclic. In my 40 to 50 years, I see what I have in my shipping, what I have seen is there is recession, there is uh, boom, there is recession, boom, shortage, excess, shortage, excess. It has never been a normal this. Shipping company said, I'm short of horses. And again, after a few years, excess officers, people are on the road. This is the problem with shipping. So do we have, as everybody said, when there is excess, do you have a provision for alternate jobs? That's the most important thing. Because today, with the numbers being there, if I don't go able to join the ship and I was waiting for it for two years, can I do get something for getting me bread? 
The third very important thing is, as uh, our chief guest said, artificial intelligence is coming a big way. There is going to be a change. Are we prepared for it? What is the kind of training we are going to provide? The fourth is, if you have to carry out risk assessment, the concept should be clear. Unless the fundamentals are strong, you know, you cannot do risk assessment. Today, most of the accidents are happening because the fundamentals are not strong. The risk assessment is not properly carried out. So, again, we have to look at it when we talk about learning what we are doing. And maritime training is basically skill based, which cannot be taught online. It has to be hands on. See, this is one very important thing we have to look at it. Then let's look at what are the limitations and the challenges of virtual learning. Now, when we talk about learning, the first and the foremost thing what I will look at it is how does a student learn? This is the most important thing. Unless I know that, there is no point in me teaching. First, students learn by connecting new knowledge with the already know. In other words, if I am going to teach something and the prerequisite knowledge is not there, I am wasting my time and his time. That's why I have to fill up the gap. As my lecturer, the previous speaker has already spoken about it, how they are filling up the gap. This is a very important part. So what we require to do? Before we teach a topic, the student requires for the prerequisite knowledge. First, find out the background of the student at the present level. Now, this is a problem we used to find in the last organization. We used to have something like 400 students joining from all over the country. And the boards are on different levels. So, we used to have a gap for some students in certain parts, a gap in English. For some students, we used to have a gap in mathematics. For some students in thermodynamics or applied mechanics. For some students, we have a problem in electricity, electronics. So the first year is a big problem because the first few lectures used to be a challenge for all the teachers. And that's the reason we have to first find out what is the present level, how are we going to fill up the gap. If we are not able to do it, we are not teaching. It's as simple as that. Very important thing. A human being learns best when the material is given in number of ways. If I just give a lecture, you may learn, you may not learn. But the various senses which we have, if that is able to absorb more, then my learning is effective. Uh, Where it is uh, your eye visual, auditory, kinesthetic, the more senses we use, the better is the learning. So that's what we have to tune whenever we are teaching. Now, in virtual learning, lectures is not sufficient. It has been supplemented by the learning management system, which must have a self-learning material. Now, the most important thing is a learning management system, an excellent software. You know, that is what we require and very difficult to get, but you have to have it. Now, when we talk about what is a self-learning material, you know, some people think self-learning material means I just get the notes from a textbook and pass on. No, that is not self-learning material. To prepare a self-learning material, the teacher has to work so hard that an average student, when he sees, reads that, is able to understand. Maybe how we do it, with a lot of diagrams, with a lot of uh, sketches, with a lot of animation. If it is an engineering topic, you must have animation. Have a software for that. This is what we require to prepare a self-learning material. The self-learning material must also be able to convert text to speech. So, the best way for me to learn would be that I am reading it and I am also listening. Auditory, visual. See, this is very important for me. The more senses I use, better it is. So, this is how it has to be prepared. And that's not all. The other important thing is, people learn less by reviewing the material. I read the material ten times, I won't learn much. But if I am tested, if I try to recall, I learn better. And that is the reason why you must have a self-evaluation. Now, what we recommended in the self-learning material was, you have a module, at the end of the module, there will be a number of questions and quizzes where you have to answer. Unless you get the correct answer, and you are given the right answers there, you will not be able to go to the next module. So, the self-learning material is the most important thing because that module is so well programmed that after I go through it, I am able to answer all the questions right. Even if one is wrong, 
you have to go back, study, come back again, do that particular answer. It may not be the same question, it may be some other question. Unless you are thorough with it, you will not be able to go to the module 2. And that is how it has to be prepared. Then the other thing is tutor marked assignments. In virtual learning, should we not have tutor marked assignments? Yes, we should have. What's wrong in a student writing? Scan it and shed it. We correct it. Today I am correcting with my this, uh, I, I guess, uh, with, with this uh, pen, uh, or I pen or something, that is what. With those kind of a pen on the screen, I am able to correct. This is what we require to do. So, you have to have the student writing on the piece of paper, scan it, send it, the teacher corrects it. Now, the correction is very important. If I just give 3 out of 10, the student doesn't know what is happening. But if I tell him where it is going wrong, these are the errors, these are the mistakes you are going to make, this is how you are going to improve, that is the correct way of for tutor marked assignment. And there the teachers have to be trained for that. The student must learn through evaluation. The, every evaluation should be a learning experience. Like I say, even the rules they say, a student if he fails, he must successfully fail. That means, if I fail, I must know where I have gone wrong, how I am going to improve. This is very important. That is a part of your virtual learning. Now, when we talk about virtual learning, we have two types. One is synchronous and the second is asynchronous. In synchronous learning, like what we are doing, I give a lecture, the students are listening to it, there can be interaction, the, of course it has to be again supplemented with the presentation, the learning management system, all that has to be a part of it. You know, I can't have a virtual learning without all the other things. Lecture is only one part, all the other things have to be supplemented along with it. The advantage of synchronous learning is that the student, that means the teacher is there, the student can interact with the teacher. Because one of the very important things in learning is student learn best when there is teacher to teacher interaction, when there is teacher to student interaction and student to student interaction. Now here again, what we have done when we had this problem of virtual learning, I knew the student student interaction was important. We kept one hour for the student to interact with each other. After the class, we said, okay, 7 to 8, the Zoom will be on, we give the license, you all can talk to each other, don't abuse us, but we are not going to be there. The idea of the interaction was one is socializing, number two is whatever they missed, that was there and also talk to each other on that particular subject. This is what we strive and this is something, something we have to develop this way. Now synchronous learning has been supplemented with learning management system, quiz and tutor marked assignment. It cannot be only lectures. There is a mistake, a lot of organizations make that I only give lecture and my job is over. No, it doesn't end with that the student should be able to interact with the teacher. How I am going to interact? What is the time I am going to give? What is the, you know, the platform I am going to have? That can be worked out. But there should be a provision for interaction. Now, asynchronous learning. In asynchronous learning, I have everything recorded. All the material is over there. And the student can learn whenever he wants. That is the most important thing. He has a flexibility to learn. But the teacher has to monitor the progress. Now when I talk about asynchronous learning, the most important thing is, people learn in their own pace, in their own way. I may take one hour to learn, B will take two hours to learn. A is not better than B. Because what really matters is the outcome. Is he able to apply his knowledge in his real life situation. That is what we are interested. We are not interested whether he has taken 10 hours to learn a particular topic. But what we are interested is, at the end of the day, what is the outcome? So that is the reason asynchronous learning will be very productive because if I am a slow learner, I can still do it. I can learn in my own pace slowly and then, you know, get whatever degree I want. Another advantage is if I am already working over there, I can do it in evening time learn that, you know, upgrade myself. Now, asynchronous learning will have to provide video recording of lectures, then you must be able to access the learning management system, the robust system which you must have with all the provisions, self-learning material, text-to-speech, all this should be provided. Animation should be there on a PPT. You can't have just a normal PPT. Today, getting proper software where you have number of animation, 
like we had in our organization, one of my faculties had prepared, you know, block off all the parts in the particular the equipment. You know, the moment the equipment is there, just blows up and shows which part is where. Then animation of pumps working, how do you know liquid is going? All these kind of animation should also be provided. These software should be provided for the self-learning material. Then of course there should be quiz. The student should be able to answer the quiz, and if he is not completed, he cannot go to the next module. This is very important. Tutor mark assignment is also part of it. The evaluation should be at his own pace because each person evaluation will vary and it should be at your own pace. It cannot be that just because one person has finished the two modules and I have not hit one module, no. I take my own time. This is the way a learning should take place. There will be challenges in this unsynchronous learning. There is going to be an administrative problem because there will be hundreds of students having different interaction with the teacher is going to be a big challenge. Now what are the challenges with virtual learning? The biggest problem we found was net connectivity. One of the big things we had was for nearly about 1000 students, some of them could not get the net, they had a lot of problems, you know these are some issues which is there all over the country. Lack of interaction between the students, student to student interaction is lacking and that is very very important, that is one serious problem. Your skill cannot be developed. That is another problem, whatever you may teach. This is another serious problem which you have with virtual learning that continuous focusing on the computer or the mobile phone causes strain on the eyes. We have, you know, when I did research, they said normally whenever you're using the computer, they do the formula 20, 20, 20. That means every 20 minutes you must close your eyes for 20 seconds or look somewhere else for 20 feet away. Every 20 minutes you require a break when you are on the computer. You can't do it continuously. So when you have a 6 hour lecture, if sufficient breaks are not given, the student is not focusing. This is what the teacher also, the administration must also look into. Another very big problem which has happened with many of the students, laptop is a disaster. Why? I am looking down. The more I bend, I am going to have shoulder pain, neck pain, all kinds of problems. So the economics of sitting posture is equally important the moment I talk about virtual learning. That means the student must be told that okay, this is the way you must stand, the computer should be at this height, or these are very, very important whenever we talk about a virtual learning. The problem we found was that many students don't have a separate room. Like in Mumbai, it's impossible, very difficult for a you know, separate room to be given to a child. Okay, today some family is there, but not of all. And then the student told me that, sir, in the same room, my sister is studying, my mother is doing some work, my father is doing no work, the dog is barking, how do you expect me to study? This was the problem we faced with the students. Second problem, computers. Said my husband only one computer, and four people are fighting for it. What do I do with that? This is another problem we have in our country. Very important is virtual learning is effective if it is self-directed learning. Because when I give you the material, if you are not, you know, you take your own time. Yes, I want to study, but you take your own time. Unless you are really interested and I want to complete it, you have a motivation to do that, it will never be successful. What we noticed was the virtual learning is okay for senior level. Because they have a separate room, especially when it is master's level, he's got a separate house, a separate room, less disturbance. When he's a lower level, they have a problem that they are still staying with somebody, they may not have a separate laptop, or even if they have, that is being shared by two, three persons, their house they may not have a separate room. Then secondly, if the maturity level is very important. The lower PC level is a disaster because in PC level the child is not matured. That's why it's, uh, it's, uh, virtual learning is not very effective for PC. Yes, we can do a part of it, but not a full. Because the child has to be mature. At senior level, corporate level, it's very useful because the maturity level is important because it has to be a self-directed learning. The present scenario, you have the self-learning material evaluation which is being done for the modular courses by BD Shipping. That has been a success. The oral examination being conducted for competency exam online is an excellent idea. 
we you know by the, the lecturer is one place the student is another place you know internal is in a the external is in b student is c and that is a very excellent thing we have done the written examination can have the remote proctoring i am has been doing it but how far is successful there are lot of issues with that because very interesting thing i'll say that uh, when i was correcting a paper yeah very interesting thing the student when he took a photograph you supposed to take a photograph and uh, upload it by mistake he took the photograph along with the textbook <laughs> you know these are the issues we notice you know what all is happening so how effective for it in exam we have a doubt on that uh, yes common interest test i found was very successful in virtual because you see what happens is previously when you have a cd for selection the student had to come to the center he may not be staying staying in that place he has to travel all the way he comes with his parent he has to stay over there there's a cost involved then there's a you know you have to do the test and then he is appearing for 10 tests because i have been doing the test for 2000 student on average and i know each student is going for the eight test not one or two after 12 standard 10 times is moving up and down so then he says do i really want to go for this will i get selected or not by way so much of money so he, the number of applications are not so many because he's not sure he's going to get selected he or she that's also more important the moment we had online he just had to pay the small fees which is for the form the numbers drastically increased and maximum number of students took the test and then we had a greater choice and then we realized that the online is more effective for you know with remote proctoring and also with your uh, online uh, interview and we could select the best candidate so this is one area where we really consider for virtual learning what we have to make effective is video recording of all lectures to be provided an online forum of discussion for the student in text format teacher should post a question should uh, the student should respond to that that also is there all the files with comprehensive schedule for the entire course that also should be posted the recordings of the instructors explaining the assignment should be there online quizzes mid exam all the exams should be there you know there's no compromise in the exam and should be written exam you know when you learn when you write you don't learn typing on the computer you can scan it and send it that's the way it should be a uh, student more important thing if you want to have online virtual is there sufficient provision for digital library the attendance is there in india we have strong national digital library that is already there the international that is digital library when you do abroad you have that uh, we had to a certain extent there is with the pandemic time what we did, told the students was that you want any topic i have the librarians over there all of them which are there because of the campus and the moment it says students says i want from this textbook i want this some particular thing the librarian used to scan it and we used to send it to the student immediately or the teacher used to go there and just say okay these pages these notes are there some kind of a provision should also be there because the digital textbook or the digital information also should be available the moment i talk about virtual class college library also should have digital book which should be accessible to the student you know you should be able to uh, your log on and you should be able to access that particular textbook this provision also should be there most important thing there should be a backup for teacher and student as a teacher i can't say my computer is gone i have a replacement i can't say my net is not working you have to have a backup both teacher and student then most important thing what we found and how we improved the system was the moment this uh, you know online courses started in the pandemic we put all the your uh, uh, student affairs uh, student that is uh, your wardens the sports instructors they were asked to contact every student at least every fortnight ask them how they felt what problems they had it was not a teacher it was a wardens and the sports instructor so the student will say no i didn't understand math i didn't understand this this person is going too fast this voice is not clear we should get the feedback again improve virtual learning will be successful provided we have excellent feedback that's a very very important thing without that it is not successful similarly the teacher should also have a proper feedback to the student how he is progressing that also is very important these two feedbacks are a part of virtual learning you can't have you know just a student's feedback i also should be able to give my feedback yeah, here you are lacking you better do this this is what you should do in conclusion 
the future will be blended learning with specialized lectures being conducted online. Yes, there is an advantage because I have an expert on somewhere in another country, he can give an online lecture and I can use that as a virtual platform. Normal curriculum, part of the virtual learning will be conducted online and part can be offline. It could be blended learning, what we are looking at it, some subjects can be virtual, some subjects can be well, this contact classes. The oral examination, the competitive exam, I found is a big success and I think that should continue. And part evaluation can also be done online. Virtual learning is ineffective for pre seek courses where skill development is required. Because pre seek courses you are developing a child, you can't do it on virtual learning. For competency courses, part can be conducted virtual, part can be conducted on, on, on normal learning. Virtual learning is effective only when the learner is matured and interested in learning. That's the most important thing. If he is not interested in learning, virtual learning is no use. Thank you for your patient listening. Thank you very much.